So I got a comment on my last vlog, the vlog. I have learned through the process of listening to my own speech patterns that I can't pronounce the word vlog. Anyway, I got a comment that was like, you don't need to make every video about reading. We just want to follow you around, do like a daily vlog. Hi. <laughs> hey. I made a TikTok salad. Some lady was like, put some cucumbers and peppers and parsley and onion and chickpea with balsamic vinegar and olive oil and spices and it's gonna be so good. Context being, I'm trying to be someone who likes cucumbers. There's a couple of foods that I feel like it's childish if you don't like them. Speaking only of me, cucumbers and tomatoes. That's so childish if I don't like them. I'm still too scared to put tomato in this because I, cucumber is the one that I'm halfway there. Tomato, five per, I can do a sun-dried tomato or I can do a sauce, that's it. So as I put away some leftovers, one fun thing that's happening soon is supposedly Texas is supposed to have, well not even Texas, supposedly a lot of the US is about to have a really big freeze coming up. I saw on our weather app that it's gonna be like 30 degrees, so I didn't think that much of it, but I just saw a TikTok, which means it's gonna be more of a significant event than I thought. So I'm doing a Walmart pickup tonight of some basics. I have some potatoes that my mom gave me, so I think I'm gonna make a potato soup for dinner. Is this a daily vlog or am I just doing a video about me cooking? Oh, I'm chopping an onion, you wanna see? It feels so illegal to not be talking about books right now. Am I the only one who keeps all of these takeout containers? Because they make amazing onion storage when you only used half a red onion. Just put the other half in here. It's fine. I really like cooking and while I was going through my financial struggles of the past, I don't know, three years, I really didn't get that much fresh produce or eat that healthily. So I'm trying to get back into that, even if it's baby steps. Like today I had a broccoli omelet. As you know, I had my salad for lunch. And this is my first attempt making potato soup from scratch. So I'm gonna get peeling. Last night I got in such a bad mood that I decided to take a walk, which is how you know it's really bad. I was like, I just need to get out and go walk and use this energy to do something. And as I was walking, I did put on a sad playlist because I wanted to feel depressed. I'm making a playlist called like pensive drive, which is like when I'm driving at night and I want to be thoughtful and feel like I'm in a soundtrack. I just want to be able to turn that playlist on. So if you have any music recommendations of like pensive music, I don't know what a synonym for pensive is. Maybe just like quiet, thoughtful, like sad adjacent songs. I'm talking like Sufjan Stevens, Men With Guitars With Mommy Issues. I would love to hear about it. I just realized I probably need to boil my water. Hold on. Eventually. Um. Hi, this is the soup. There's how it turned out. I finished making it. It was really good. Topped it with some cheese, blended it, put some bacon bits on it. You can't even see it. It looks like baby diarrhea. Had that for dinner, have two bowls left. Then I did a Walmart pickup because winter storm coming apparently. I got a comment like a year ago being like, oh, I miss your grocery hauls. I have no idea who said that, but this is for you. Actually, I'm just gonna keep you flipped around the whole time if you don't mind, this is easier. Um, I had an orange from the farmer's market the other day and I was like, I should get into oranges again. I think it's orange season anyway, so. I got some oranges. <gasps> oh, this one is rotted. That'll be fun. I got some apples, but quality looks like it's lacking. We'll see. Needed some more tissues, and that was like a cash back. I got shallots, channeling Emily Mariko, so I can do parchment pop-up sheets. I got some marshmallows for hot chocolate, some chocolate chips for recipes. Got some pitas, always have tortillas on hand, Ritz crackers, a lifetime supply of lemon juice, because if there's one thing about me, I'm not gonna buy a fresh lemon. Enchilada sauce, chilies, oh, and paprika for a recipe. They also gave me chili powder, which I don't need and hopefully I didn't pay for, so thanks Walmart. Also some honey. If you like boba, I have to put you on these. I know this makes me two years old, but I'm a little bit ridiculously attached to these. It's fruit cups, but it has boba in it. Okay, it's probably more sugar than fruit, but 
I love it. Uh, there's some bananas in there. Got some granola bars. There's some ramen restock in the back. A loaf of bread. Corn muffin mix. This is my pantry. Hey guys. <laughs> and then don't tell my mom I got those. I'm 26 years old but still feel the need to get permission to have dessert. And I'm pretty sure that was all. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> I also got five boxes of anti-diarrheal because these are like a dollar. So I just put them in every purse I own. Highly recommend. <laughs> Makes a great stocking stuffer. <laughs> I can't make this up. Gordo has been meowing at the balcony door. Meow. At first I thought he was just seeing his shadow. And then he keeps meowing. And I was like, what is he on about? So I turned on the light to see if there was a bug or something. Meow. This boy's never seen a leaf before. <laughs> it's so windy, he's like, it's a leaf! But it's so cold, you can't go out. It's too windy. It'll blow you away. I just bawled chopping some shallots, so excuse me. It's 1020, it doesn't look any different, but I cleaned. I also ended up meal prepping another dish. I forgot that tomorrow night I'm gonna make chicken heroes for dinner, so I was like, time to marinade. Transitioning from one Taylor Swift shirt to another feels pretty on brand for me this evening. Unintentionally, this is like a cooking vlog. That's really all I did earlier, but I love cooking. A lot of times, instead of like being productive and making my own meals, I'm more tempted to crawl into bed and go on TikTok. And I'm not really proud of that. <laughs> so I actually started taking a class to help boost my confidence and my motivation and give me tools to help me get out of like that rut. It's actually taught by a YouTuber named Michelle. And I am not someone who ever like sets long-term goals or even has like a habit tracker. So hearing her talk about all of that has just been really inspiring. Me and the other 50,000 people who are currently taking this class actually found it over on Skillshare. I guarantee you have heard of it, but Skillshare is my sponsor for today. Everyone stop and applaud. I'm so grateful to work with them. So Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creative people. Skillshare has thousands of classes led by experts in things like crafting and art or applications on your phone or your computer, self-improvement, music, and so much more. We're a little bit of the ways into the year. Maybe New Year's resolutions aren't on your mind as much, but it's still the perfect time to take a leap and invest in yourself and your goals this year. Skillshare actually has something called learning paths. These can help you get from a beginner to a professional or even just help refine the skills that you already have if you're an intermediate in your field. All the classes in a learning path are episodic so they'll build on each other and they're built to reinforce your knowledge and to just make sure you're retaining it. There's even super niche things that you all know I love like crocheting and singing and they even have journaling classes and ideas there on how you can get started with self-reflection. So if you want to try out the class that I'm currently taking or anything I mentioned. Exciting news. The first 500 people to click the link in the description and join Skillshare will actually get a whole month free. Highly recommend going and checking that out. Hello, welcome back. Me and my Mediterranean salad. And if I have parsley in my teeth, mind your business about it. I actually don't know why I'm acting like I'm going to take a bite of this, but I have to speak in this video. Hey, I wouldn't call myself the biggest fan of children's literature. Obviously I'm into YA, but anything that's like middle grade or classic kids books, I might skip out on. The one exception to that is I'm very prone to buying like classics kids and or like nostalgic books that I might have read when I was in elementary school. So this is my stack of them. I just love chasing childhood nostalgia, okay? Some of these I've never read and I wanna see, are they still nice and cute and fun for adults? Some of these I did read as a kid, so I just wanna re-experience them. And some of these are really popular books that I just never got around to and I, feel left out. Actually, that's probably most of them. <laughs> Let's be honest, I'm probably gonna start with the shortest ones, so I've taken that selection. I can't remember if I've read this one, but The Chocolate Touch. Also, I think I did read this in like fifth or sixth grade, but Freak the Mighty. I know for a fact I did not read The Boxcar Children, but it's such a classic title that I wanna see what the, what the deal is, what the hype is. These ones I couldn't resist buying when I found them for like a penny. Winnie the Pooh. This is an essential to do for this video. I saw a teacher on TikTok reading this book to her children, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane, cried, 
cried about it. So wanted to read that after I saw that. And then some of the longer books. Holes by Lewis Satcher, absolute classic, haven't read it. Number of the Stars and Milkweed have the same tone to me. I think these are both about like Jewish kids in the 1940s. This one I know I did not read. Milkweed, I specifically remember my sixth grade English teacher read this aloud to us. And then we'll see if I even get to these, but a handful of some older young adult books like the Penderwicks, but not buddy classic 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 Anne of green gables have not read it and i'm so excited to and also the golden compass i was a narnia girl growing up so i can't believe i've never read this so for the next couple of weeks i'm going to thrust myself back into the joy of the early 2000s and just read some of these and try and rediscover in them what i might have loved in them as a kid if any of them are absolutely ridiculous or not worth my time nowadays i will be sharing that with you as well so to start i'm gonna kick it off strong with a short book, The Chocolate Touch. All I know about this is that it's a kid who touches stuff that becomes chocolate and so it's about be careful what you wish for. If you only want to eat sweets it can end up being a bad thing. So yeah this book was written in 1952 so we'll see how well she has stood up to the test of time. So I didn't even move from my spot on the bed and just read this all in one sitting. That must have taken like half an hour. And also super cute. I was kind of expecting this would be a little bit sketchy with like disordered eating or something weird but it was actually pretty well written and really well done. You can definitely see the age like it was talking about how you need to make healthy eating choices and one of the examples was pickled herring. So I don't know if the man who wrote this is Scandinavian or if that was a much bigger thing in the 50s and 60s but I liked the main character. I liked all the situations he had to go through to figure out why the charcoal touch was happening to him. So I don't know, I think it was really cute. I think I'm gonna give it like four stars. This feels so ridiculous that I'm gonna sit here and rate all these kids books, but this was giving me a twinge of memory. Like I think I might have had this read to me. A couple of things like the teacher's name is Miss Plimsoll and that sounds really familiar. I just thought it was really cute and it was super quick and easy. Next I think I want to read Winnie the Pooh, which I only have like half an hour left on my lunch break, so let's see how far I can get into this. I made it about halfway through and I don't think I've seen the movie for this in probably 20 years but they must have pulled some of the scenes from the movie directly from the dialogue because it, it just feels so familiar. I love the way that he's shown as like very silly, almost this Spongebob-esque brainlessness. Like literally walking in circles and seeing your own footprints and thinking you're following someone. It's like you and the narrator are both in on the joke but none of the characters are. Just absolutely childlike. It is such a breath of fresh air. Like these are so easy to read. Every chapter is a new little story so it would be very easy to get take this a chapter at a time. But again, I read like half of it in one sitting so it also is very digestible and goes down easy. I know because it's Disney, Winnie the Pooh has like a cult following and you'll always see like TJ Maxx and stuff will have Winnie the Pooh characters on it but the people who are obsessed with it should read the book too because the book is so cute. Finding out that Christopher Robin was actually this author's actual son is so sweet and I'm almost interested in researching this and understanding more of like where this comes from. I know this author served in World War One. then when he came home he like wrote these for his son. That's so sweet to me. I'm sure if I dig deeper this author is you know like any man in the 20th century probably racist and homophobic and all that good stuff but I'm having such a fun time with this and I'm so happy I'm reading it. Sorry I just got word that someone said you were trying to out pizza the hut. Anyway good morning. I have my breakfast of champions. It's a snow day today. I have a little quiche from Aldi, a cashew bar, and a fruit cup. Good old American processed food. My update is that I finished Winnie the Pooh last night and it was so cute. I have to give it five stars just because I really enjoyed it. It really brought back nostalgia of seeing the movie. I need to rewatch the movie clearly because so much of the book felt familiar already. I loved the narration of it where it's like the dad telling the story to the child so it's a story within a story. Part of me is still inclined to research it a little bit to see like are any of these based on real conflicts going on like for example Kanga's story is all about oh she's new to the neighborhood and she's from somewhere else so we need to get her to leave and I was like okay xenophobia maybe I'm overthinking it and it's a kid's book but it was in the back of my head but I finished that at like midnight last night and did not have the camera out so I got a little bit into my next book I decided to pick up 
the boxcar children which i know for a fact that i did not read it's just like a super popular title so i wanted to see what the craze is these are published in i think the 50s uh yep 1942 not much of a synopsis so far but it's about these four orphans i'm assuming they're gonna find a train to sleep in or something not sure how based in reality this is for the time period but i just love old timey writing for kids because it's not too difficult to understand but it still has that like old language i may have napped instead of reading but i did just finish the boxcar children i have so many thoughts about this it's not what i expected at all so first of all this is supposed to be a mystery no the whole plot of this book and the way it's written totally reminds me of how kids play make-believe because it's like let's pretend we're orphans and then we'll find a train that we can live in and then we'll go to the dump and get dishes and then our older brother will go work for a doctor they were so happy about their situation being like four young children living out in the woods by themselves it was just so hyperbolic and unrealistic but you can't discount it just for being fun it really was not what I was expecting though and honestly there's really no mystery element other than at the end you find out like why they're running away from authority figures and preferring to live in the woods but I would say this one definitely does not stand up to time because it's like why are you the way that you are <laughs> like just don't you want to live indoors and then everything that happens just spirals out of control so quickly it's just implausible but cute like i enjoyed it i'm probably gonna give it three stars i could not fathom reading 19 books in this series though so <laughs> i'm gonna be done with it here here's the thing i think i'm gonna do freak the mighty because i'm not convinced that i'm gonna want to read this full thing this is about like two characters with disabilities who become friends and i guarantee this is written by a very able-bodied person and probably in a time period where that wasn't regarded so sensitively. If this book pisses me off because it's like fetishizing or making inspiration porn out of people with disabilities, then I might call it quits. But I did read this for school, so I kind of want to see what I remember about it. Hi. Isn't it tragic that this is my natural hair pattern and I'm too lazy to do the curly girl method? Anyway, it is past my bedtime for a work night but thank goodness for the snow and ice because I think I'm gonna work from home tomorrow that means absolutely nothing to you but I did stay up late to finish my book the more that I read this I was like oh my god I remember that oh my god I remember that wait I think this book ends this way so I definitely read this as a kid I think it was in seventh grade honestly knowing me I might have just skim read it or not read it and listened to the class discussions but I flew through this it is so easy to read I guess the final synopsis because I gave a really shaking one at the beginning this book is about Max and Kevin Max's dad is in prison the reasons for that are a little bit veiled so I'll keep it a secret but he lives with his grandparents and next door moves in Kevin it's not specified that he has dwarfism, but he's definitely a little person and has some health issues that go along with that And so they band together as seen on the cover They are like a team where Max is always carrying around Kevin. Kevin's nickname is Freak So he calls himself Freak the Mighty and also Max's disability is a little bit unspecified It's kind of just grouped into like a learning disability Anyway, I said earlier that one of my big fears would be that this book is just super ableist and doesn't stand up to time And it definitely uses the R slur and there's bullying toward these characters But I will say that it was not as bad as I thought it would be So again, the writing style is so conversational and that's honestly purpose like when you get to the end you realize why it is the way that it is i love the friendship between these two characters as an adult i was like oh my gosh this is written this way because of this detail and oh this comes back to this and this is because of this so this is probably a really good book for whether you're a child or an adult like there's just little things to notice as the story goes along gordo is going ham on his toes right now can i help you there is an element of heart pounding moment toward the middle of the book that really kept me going so honestly i read this in like two sittings it's only 160 or so pages as well a lot of these books i'm getting rid of after i read them if they're not like new favorites but kind of want to hold on to this one it was really sweet so i think i'm gonna be giving this one four stars i almost just pat myself on the back and i was like oh my god i'm just flying through these girl they're 
a hundred pages, if that. The two next contenders that I really want to read are Number of the Stars and also The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. This one is just so iconic and I don't think that I ever read it. Somehow I missed out on reading this as a kid and it's been a long, as Taylor Swift once said, it's been a long time coming. So I'm going to start this tonight. I guarantee I won't finish it because it's already like midnight. Midnight? I... I, this is a problem. I have to stop. I'll come back and give a full synopsis later because really the only thing I could tell you is that this is about a Jewish child in a concentration camp. Or maybe not even in the concentration camp, it sounds like. We'll see. I'll talk to you tomorrow. 3.28 a.m. Well, damn, this book has hands because not only did I read that in one sitting, I'm also crying a little bit. So I think I got this book confused with The Boy in the Striped Pajamas because this is not about a Jewish kid or concentration camps. It's about the friend of a Jewish family. And it's set in Denmark, which I thought was really cool. Sorry, let me just keep wiping the tears from my eyes. So midway through the war, when they start relocating Jewish people, this family who's connected to the resistance has to find a way to keep their neighbors safe and help them escape to Sweden. Lois Lowry has really great writing. It's not overly simplistic for a kid's book. Obviously the action was very tense. The more I read kid's books, the more I'm like, how in the world would, I mean, I say kid's books, but I'm sure a lot of people read this in like middle school or upper elementary school. Still, I'm like, I had probably no grasp of the Holocaust at that time. This must be a very difficult conversation to have in classrooms, so I just could not imagine being this young reading about this kind of thing. It had me thinking during it what it would have been like to read this as a kid. I clearly didn't, so. Again, I'm gonna give this four stars. I really enjoyed it. And now, I get to start another one because I have to start a book before I go to bed. And I think you already know what I'm going to say. Switching from a sad book to a happy one. Maybe a bittersweet one. I've heard the ending will make me cry. We'll see. Just based on her other books that I've really enjoyed, I'm very much looking forward to this. Good morning. It is me again, friends. Slightly weepy, but freshly finished with The Miraculous Journey of Edward tonight. Holy gamoli this was so fun it was really mature for a kid's book not in subject matter at all but the emotional journey it goes on and what it wants you to understand of like opening your heart to love was so interesting for a book about a toy i was expecting this to have like the toy being able to talk and to move but it's just this stationary doll that can look and hear but can't move which makes me sad like i have buddy sitting in my bed my stuffed animal and I'm like, can he hear me? Can he see the room? Should I set him up so he can see? The toy learns a lesson about having different owners and learning how to love them. It was super sweet. I did get a little bit weepy at the end. Not as much as the TikTok that I saw. I thought it was going to be far more emotional, but it wrapped up very nicely. So yeah, I'm happy that I read that. Gosh, I have so many more. What next? I think I'm going to give the Penderwicks a go just because... This book was massive when I was in elementary school, maybe even middle school. I don't think I ever read it, but I definitely saw it everywhere. So I want to see what this is about. I think it's another family book, like The Boxcar Children was about four siblings. Um, this is about four siblings and their pet. So I have to go get to work, but I'm going to start this the second I have the opportunity. Good morning. I've decided I'm gonna vlog today. And even though I haven't like brushed my hair or anything yet today, here's what it's like to hang out with me at 9.30 on a Sunday. <sighs> this is riveting, right? The only thing missing is the fact that I should be on TikTok right now. I've got nothing done today because I went back and laid in bed because my throat hurts. If we're being honest, I don't know how to treat this. I'm just a child, so I have an emergency. And then I found like Dayquil in my cabinet. All right, bone up the teeth. Okay. I've been kind of making my way through the Penderworks, but it's very cozy and sweet. So it's good vibes for a sick day. I just remembered I have all the ingredients to make like a chicken noodle soup. I do have leftovers still from some other stuff that I've made this week, but I feel like I just need to do the pounce and some soup. So I have 
chicken defrosting in the crock pot. I gotta chop veggies. The last thing I wanna do is cook right now. I just wanna go back into bed. But I think I will definitely be thanking myself later if I make this now. Okay, veggies are chopped. I'm gonna let, this is frozen chicken and I'm scared to put everything in with frozen chicken. So I'm gonna let the chicken defrost a little bit and then put everything in until that happens. These bananas are looking ready for some banana bread. And I know if I don't do it now, I'm not gonna do it. So I'm just gonna throw that together. If you can't tell, I love cooking. Good morning. It's a rainy Saturday and I just finished the Penderwicks. I don't know if I gave a full updated synopsis for this so I'll backtrack a little bit. It's about these four sisters who are all ages like 5 to 12. Their mom died when the oldest was young and every summer the dad when he's on break from being a professor, they go to their summer house. And this summer, they're at a new place. It's like a guest house on the grounds of a mansion, the owner of which has a son who is around these kids' age. And so it's all about the summer shenanigans they get into with this new friend they make and also like the family still recovering from losing the mom and each of the girls had such a distinct personality and I just thought it was so sweet. It's so funny this book almost reads like a TV show because each chapter is just some new shenanigan that they get themselves into. The whole summer is filled with drama. The tone of the book really reflects like childhood imagination. This is like before iPad kids were a thing like the boredom and imagining you have to do to make life interesting when you're just hanging out somewhere. So I just thought it was very sweet. I do know that this is a series. I don't think I would continue the series, but I did think it was really well written and I can see how this was so popular when I was in middle school. I think I would have devoured it. So I think I'm gonna give this like three and a half, four stars. And I know I kind of slacked on this being a true daily vlog or weekly vlog at this point, bringing you along in my life, but I was sick for a lot of January, so wasn't feeling like recording and then just was so absorbed in these books that I didn't have time to just set up a camera to show me reading because I was flying through them. But hope you enjoyed anyway. Thank you everyone so much for watching. Thank you Skillshare again for sponsoring the video. Don't forget to go click that link down below. I will catch up with you next time. Toodles.